Howdy ho drummers, this is Mickey and I have a great question here. I don't come away from practice pleased with what I can do. I come away from practice frustrated by what I cannot do. Can you please address this? Love that question. And it's such a, a, a true authentic one because most people won't admit this. So if you're feeling frustrated at the end of your practice, just know that you are not alone. I'm going to help you shift out of that in less than a couple of minutes today. So I could give a whole seminar, whole day seminar on this topic. But the one thing that I know that will really, really help you because this works for me, I try and test this with myself and with my students is, this is not fluffy stuff either. Really need to land this with you. Before you even pick up your tipper or your drumsticks or whatever instrument that you're playing, you want to have a very, very clear intention for the allotted time that you're going to sit down and practice that. And that is much more important than most people will do. So I will tell you right now at, at my schools that I teach, we have practice diaries. And for each individual student, I'm writing down what we did that lesson, where we started, where we ended from, and then I give them homework assignments on what to work on for the next week. And then at the bottom of the page, there are seven blocks and it has the days of the week. They take that diary home if they're a day pupil, some of them bored, but they get their parent or themselves will initial or put a check in the boxes where of the days that they have practiced. And there is no surprise that there's a direct correlation in the people that some people come back with every single box filled in. And guess what? They're just skyrocketing. And people are like, oh my gosh, they're amazing. I'm like, yeah, they're putting in the work. Right. So even I have very young students, like as young as like six and seven that are doing this work and they don't have the awareness yet to think, OK, I need to set my intention for the day. So I set the intention for them. That's my job as a teacher. But also I say, this is what we're going to accomplish today. And then they're like, OK, and then they know. And it's actually very they really like the black and white. This is what we're going to do. So that takes a lot of preparation on any teacher. All my teachers here will know. We do a lot more stuff <laughs> outside the classroom uh, in prep work. And guess what, though? It makes your whole day just flow like magic, like you had magic wand in the day's bliss. Like yesterday, I had 13 back-to-back -back private drum kit lessons because I, we had music heats today. And we also fit in an outdoor pipe band practice in one day. That's not, that's an extra long marathon, eight-hour drum day. I, that's not the norm, but we're in into silly season of summer term here. I knew that to go with very little time uh, throughout the day to even have time to, you know, eat or anything like that. I need to be very intentional. Like on the weekend, I planned that day out so that it would just go smoothingly. And none of them knew that I was having a busy day because I was fresh for each one of them. So set your intention. When you sit down, you think like I sit down and journal and I'm like, okay, what are my three int main intentions for the day? It literally makes you think about, okay, how would I love this day to go? How would I love this day to be? And it really makes you stop and think okay, I'm in control of how I want this day to be and what I get to achieve. And it's actually very empowering. So intention is everything. So as adult learners, this is a new piece of the formula that you're going to start to weave into your practice from now on. Because I will tell you, just like our regular to-do list, a lot of times we over we make it too long. Pick one thing. So I'm just going to pick one two-bar phrase and I'm going to drill that sucker. A lot of people, I will tell you right now, this is this is me being super, super truthful, okay? Look into my eyes when I say this, because I'm going to give it to you straight with love. Most people, I would say the majority of people learning an instrument, underestimate, highly underestimate the amount of sheer repetition, 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 repetition that is required on the way to mastery repetition, repetition of the same thing at a nice controlled tempo, first of all, is they underestimate how much is involved in it. They go play it a couple of times and they want to go faster, play it a couple of times. And there's not really any great amount of skill and control there, right? Playing slow is actually quite a skill. So when people say, oh, I can't play slow, I can only play fast, big alarm bells go off my head. Like, and we all have the same amount of time, but if you can really focus your time in say 30 minutes of practice time, you get a lot done in 30 minutes, right? 
But if you faff about and like check your phone and do lots of stuff, we can we can waste a lot of time. So here's what I would say. Even just set yourself 30 minutes for the day. Set your intention. I'm going to practice 30 minutes today. Then you want to be clear on what your actual goal is, right? Because if, and I just actually, I just learned this. I got off my high performance mentorship call. It's 10 o'clock on a Tuesday night here. And I think I literally just wrote down this. I didn't even intend to say this in the video, but when your goal is faint, the direction, the solution, and the ways will be faint. So when your goal is you're not really sure what you want to do, what you want to achieve, the the way to get there is going to be vague and faint and feel you're going to feel frustration. Right? Doesn't that make sense? So this is kind of outside the practice time, but I want you to start thinking about what's your long-term goal? What's your like, how would I love, what kind of drummer would I love to be? What would be like my fantasy, if I could take my magic wand, what would that be? Okay. Then that seems like really far off, right? It's like trying to study for an exam that's 12 months for now. It's, we're not going to do anything. We're not going to take the action, right? So I want you to then start to think shorter period of time, 90 days. What would what would be awesome to achieve in 90 days, right? And then what would I have to do every day or how many times a week would I have to practice to achieve that that goal, right? How would I have to show up for myself? Who would I have to be? to make that happen. I'd need to schedule it into my calendar. If I don't schedule stuff into my calendar now, it probably will not happen. And so my calendar is starting to become my best friend. It's starting to help me just like take any kind of like, oh, what am I doing with my day? And it just like, oh, just makes the day flow. And so it's it's a practice. I'm still working on it. So intention is number one. Okay. Set your intention for that period of time, but then you're going to kind of expand outward a little bit and think of your long-term goal and then collapse into a 90 day goal, then you need to track it in a diary of some sort. So it can be just a plain old notebook, but keep it dedicated just for your drumming. Like it's a sacred book of you and your drumming. And that's your commitment to yourself. You're saying, I am dedicating this, this notebook to be my drum book. This is, um, and by signing it every day, putting the date in it, put you where, okay, what am I gonna achieve today? You know what? Sometimes it's just going to be a really complex two bar phrase. A lot of people will overestimate where they're going to get it done in 30 minutes. So they're going to change the world in 30 minutes. Right. And so what I would say is less is more and really try to use a lot more repetition. If you're a drummer, drum student, drummer of any kind, musician, I would say drummers in particular, if you're not practicing with metronome, what, where have you been? You are the timekeeper of the band. You're the rhythm maker. We need to be like bang on, right? It's not that the metronome is not going to train you to play like a human robot. You will still be musical. It is just, it will give you confidence in your own sense of timing. So then you'll have the freedom to really express yourself. Okay. I hope that lands because some people have a love hate relationship with the metronome. If you hate the metronome, because it tells you the truth. It feels like it's going up and down, but it's not the metronome going up and down, right? It's just going up and down, right? So start to enroll yourself in liking playing with the metronome. You can enroll yourself in anything. Enroll yourself in loving getting your practice in. Don't think of it as a chore, right? If you think drumming and practice is a chore, it's probably not for you. I'll tell you right now, drumming and practice has never been a chore for me. And uh, yeah, learning a musical instrument takes a lot of effort and work, but it doesn't feel like that when it's something that you really desire to do. So that's all I have to say about that. So here's your recap. Set a really clear intention for what you're gonna practice that day, because guess what? Here's the bonus. Intention doesn't just shift you out of feeling frustrated by the end of your practice. You actually will feel on purpose. And that feels amazing, right? Anyone that is doing their purpose, living their purpose, you know that feels right. That feels good. It feels like you're just aligned with your higher self, with God, who whatever you're connected to, if you're spiritual in any way, you, you, it's that feeling, right? And what I love with drumming is that I feel connected when I play with other people, but I also probably even more appreciate the connection that it gives me with myself. I just feel really connected to my higher being when I'm drumming. I feel so 
uh, on purpose and aligned. And it's just, uh, it feels so good. Drums make you so happy. Drums are just the coolest, right? So I don't have to convince you. I'm preaching to the choir here, right? So intention, set your intention. You'll, you, you won't feel the frustration. When your goal is faint, the direction will be faint, right? So if you don't have a clear goal, so that's your other thing, your big long-term goal. If you don't know really where you're going, well, like it's like pulling out of your driveway and not, not knowing where you're going to go that day. You got to put it into the GPS, right? And then set your short-term goal. Something that's a little bit closer within range that gets you excited. It's not like way far off in the distance, right? Gets a fire under you. And then also make sure you're tracking it with a metronome because you will be able to flick back the pages and say, oh my gosh, that two bar phrase that was really, really hard. Like also make notes of how you felt at the end of practice and if you know how things were going, how many beats per minute. You can only know how many beats per minute it is if you're tracking with the metronome. And so you'll be surprised. You'll be so glad. It's kind of like before and after pictures when people have transformations and things like that. You'll be so glad that you put your starting tempo because you will be able to see your progress in a number and then track it in your notebook and diary. And you know what? I haven't done this, but I think this would really be really, really cool too. Is at the end of your practice, you sign your name. Because that says, I have kept my integrity with myself. I'm integrity with myself because I committed this time to me. I said I was going to practice today for 30 minutes. And by gosh darn it, I did it right? And that will feel really good. If you like this video, please like it and subscribe to my channel and share it with your musical friends. Thanks so much for watching. Talk to you soon. Drum on.